Well, you're very welcome to this talk Wednesday, the 10th of August. Now, polio virus has been discovered in uh, Israel, London and uh, New York, and I'm getting a lot of concerned messages and emails about this. Um, I'm not particularly concerned about it, and I'll tell you why, but there are some things to know and there are some things to do, particularly related to vaccination. This, of course, is nothing to do with the legitimate concerns over COVID vaccination. This is polio vaccine, completely, utterly different thing. So let's dive into the details. Now, most of the information is coming from this government site here. All children aged one to nine in London to be offered a dose of polio vaccine. Um, only in London at the moment. Now, almost certainly, I think, well, I can, we can say for cert with a certainty, that this uh, polio virus came from people that had been vaccinated overseas and brought it in to the United Kingdom. And we know that's the case because we haven't used this form of vaccine in the United Kingdom since 2004. And if you're in the United States, you haven't used it since the year 2000. Almost certainly uh, these cases have come from people that were vaccinated in Nigeria and then have come to visit or live in the United Kingdom. Could be another African country, but Nigeria is the, the top of the, uh, the, the, uh, the list of likelihoods. Now, um, the last case of actual wild type polio in the UK was 1984, the actual wild type. Now, it's interesting to notice before there was any vaccination, 8000 people a year developed paralysis from polio. Now, this is the big thing with polio. This is why it's so disappointing to see it raise its ugly head, hideous head polio, in fact. Um, it can cause paralysis. It can get into the nerves and cause paralysis. It can affect the nerves that supply the diaphragm, the phrenic nerves, and can cause uh, breathing paralysis. Very often it causes paralysis in a limb. That means the muscles to that limb are not uh, innervated. Therefore, they don't move. Therefore, the atrophy, and you end up with a, a diminished atrophied limb, especially if this happens in childhood, which tragically the infection often does. So very serious, but um, I think we can keep this under control in London, New York and Israel. But 8,000 people developing paralysis every year prior to uh, vaccination uh, and, and indeed uh, prior to improved uh, public health measures as well, such as sewage, particularly because this is a faecal oral uh, infection. It gets from the faeces via contaminated sewage into drinking water, typically. Now, this is um, this is a pretty interesting graphic here. Uh, these are cases of uh, polio here in the year in the UK. Now, this is the inactivated polio vaccine, the, the IPV. That's the injectable sort that was induced in 1956. And this is the OPV here, the, the Sabin, the oral, oral polio vaccine. Now, this is inactivated, so it's not going to cause spread. But because this is live... It can go in the gastrointestinal tract and be secreted out in the stools, uh, hence being detected in the uh, in the sewage, which is what, it, what has happened. So it's a vaccine derived polio virus in sewage in north and east London. That is the current um, problem. And we did report on this a, a few months ago. This has been known about for some time, but it's uh, it, it appears to be spreading now. Hence the concern now. Um, the, there's genetic diversity in the virus now. It's an RNA virus, so it can it can actually mutate really fairly quickly, unfortunately. And there's genetic diversity. Now, what this means is um, it could have been introduced um, several times. That, that's quite possible. But the genetic diversity means that the virus has had the opportunity, the time uh, to uh, mutate, to give a genetically diverse form of the virus. And of course, the only way that the virus has got time to reproduce is inside a host, inside the gastrointestinal tract, probably, of, of uh, several uh, individuals, and the virus has mutated. And the fact that the virus has mutated indicates that it's probably spreading from person to person in some communities. And in London, particularly these areas where the, the, the virus is spreading, in London, the vaccination rate is very uh, low not high enough to prevent the spread of the virus. Other parts of the country, uh, the virus, um, the, 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 the vaccine is, there's a much higher uptake. There's more vaccination. But in these boroughs of London, particularly where the virus does appear to be spreading in the community, um, vaccination rates are low. And that's what needs to be corrected uh, ASAP. 
So most uh, m most of the viruses picked up are vaccine-like, but a few have sufficient mutations to be classified as a vaccine-derived poliovirus, vaccine-derived poliovirus uh, type 2. And this behaves like wild-type polio. It can spread. It could become uh, endemic if it, if it wasn't uh, prevented at all, again. Uh, and, and, of course, it can cause uh, paralysis. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the frightening thing about it. Now, Joint Committee on Vaccination and uh, Immunisation targeted inactivated polio vaccine IPV booster to be offered to all children in London between the ages of one and uh, nine in all London boroughs. So this is all over London. Direct quote, this will ensure a high level of protection from paralysis and help reduce further spread of the virus. We agree completely because um, the virus is spreading mostly at the moment in areas where vaccine uptake is low. Now, I know we've been through the debate on this on the COVID vaccine. That didn't turn out to be particularly good at preventing spread. In fact, it's not good at preventing spread, really, because we had such huge waves. But th th this one is different. This one is a completely different vaccine for a completely different disease. And it should, will, uh, should, and, and I fully expect it will prevent the spread of the uh, of the virus, which is good. The programme will start in the affected areas, the most effective areas, which, of course, makes perfect sense. Where polio, vi vac uh, po polio virus has been detected and vaccination rates are low. And it looks like it's the low rates combined with the recent immigration from OPV using areas that have caused this um, outbreak. Now, clinical cases still haven't been detected. Um, this is from sewage, but we know for sure it's there from the genetic analysis of the sewage. Again, JVCI, it's important all children aged one to nine, even uh, if up to date with their vaccine, accept this vaccine when offered. So it's an extra dose. So children that have had the three primary doses should have an extra one according to this recommendation. Now, it was detected first at Beckton Sewage Works. Now it's also in these boroughs here, Barnet, Brent, Camden, Enfield, Hackney, Harrington, Islington, Waltham Forest, and of course, New York City. Um, New, New York uh, and uh, Israel uh, as well. So it's, it's um, these places as well. Now, whether these are related or not, or they are separate imported events, we don't yet know. We do know the authorities are working closely together and they will get this sussed pretty soon. There is good cooperation. Total of 116 uh, cases of poliovirus type 2, the one that can spread. Isolates from uh, 19 sewage samples indicating some community spread. That is the problem. So that is the basic news of the day. What I'm going to do now is just spend a few minutes, maybe about five minutes, to give you some background information on polio if you want that. So that's the end of the bit on this current uh, recommendation uh, here. I'll be taking information from this, which is the Green Book. Uh, this is our uh, sort of um, vaccination Bible in the UK and the equivalent uh, site in the uh, United States from the, uh, the CDC. So let's go through this fairly quickly. So poliomyelitis, um, an acute illness, follows invasion through the gastrointestinal tract by poliovirus, usually via the gastrointestinal tract via the poliovirus. Virus replicates in the gut, uh, an enteric virus. It has a high affinity for nervous tissue. Spread occurs via the bloodstream and there can be retrograde axonal transport to the central nervous system. So what, what you have basically, um, if, you, if you imagine that this is the, if you imagine this is the spinal cord, for example, here, or, the, or the brain, but this is the central nervous system. Then there's, the, there's um, you'll they basically have um, nerves, for example, sensory nerves or, or indeed motor nerves. If we take a motor nerve, for example, there's like a motor neuron cell body there. And then the axon goes out into the peripheral nervous system like this. So what can happen is um, that this virus can get in the periphery, can go from the gut via the bloodstream into the periphery here, into the nerve. And then it can, it retro, retrograde means it can go this way. This virus can then pass in up through this nerve towards the central nervous system, towards the brain or the spinal cord, and it can cause infection uh, in the brain uh, and, and the spinal cord from, from the retrograde. So it's retrograde axonal transport to the central nervous system. 
an, an axon is any is any motor is any nerve fibre carrying an impulse away from the central nerve from from the cell body. Actually, that's the cell body there. So um, normally, this would generate a, a nerve impulse, or it would receive a nerve impulse from another part of the central nervous system, and it would send the impulse out. And typically, that would do something like make it so there was the muscle there; it would make a muscle contract, for example. Um, but now the, it's going back the other way into the central nervous system. Retrograde axonal transport, because the virus has a high affinity uh, for nervous tissue. This is why it's so dangerous. The virus uh, adsorbs into nervous tissue quite readily, unfortunately. Right, um, often the infection is clinically inapparent. Symptoms may range from very, very mild or asymptomatic to very severe. Fever to headaches, gastrointestinal disturbance, um, so sore tummies, vomiting, diarrhea, all that kind of thing. Malaise just means you don't feel well at all. And then stiffness in the neck and back can be due to inflammation of the meninges. And there can be what's called an aseptic meningitis. So that's inflammation of the meninges. The meninges are the, the layers around about the, uh, the central nervous system. Uh, the dura mater, the arachnoid mater and the pia mater that surround the brain and the spinal cord if they become inflamed you don't want to move your neck of course because your meninges go through your neck and you become you become quite stiff as you would in any form of infectious meningitis um, but this is a, this is an aseptic meningitis and paralysis can be a problem now uh, ratio of uh, inapparent to paralytic infections now in children a lot of the infections are mild or inapparent but one child in the thousand can get uh, paralysis and remember, there was 8,000 cases of paralysis a year uh, in the UK prior to uh, vaccination. So um, a big, a big, a big problem prior to vaccination, 8,000 a year. Adults, um, it's, they're actually more likely to get paralysis. So if adults have not been vaccinated, then they, they should be boosted. So if adults have come in from overseas. Now, adults in the UK who have been brought up in the UK, that they, they are going to be vaccinated. Um, I can't imagine there's any others that aren't really. There might be one or two, but if not, certainly consider that. Uh, the problem would be adults who've come in from overseas who perhaps have not been vaccinated in earlier life and childhood. They should certainly uh, apply for a, uh, a a polio vaccine. I actually had a, a polio and tetanus booster myself just last month because I'm planning on going to work in an endemic area shortly. And... Um, yeah, so I, I had a booster of uh, polio and, uh, and tetanus and diphtheria, I think. Um, just a normal in intramuscular injection. Um, I think I'm up to date with polio, but uh, my tetanus was probably getting a bit out of date. But the polio and the tetanus go together, so why not have both? Um, no, no issue for me there at all. Um, transmission is contact with faeces, so it's faecal oral or the pharyngeal secretions of an infected person sometimes. Polio, polio virus replicates for long periods of time in the GI tract. It can be three to six weeks in the feces in an infected person. So an infected person can be pooing this out for three to six weeks. Excreted for two weeks in saliva from the uh, pharyngeal secretions. Um, incubation period is three days to 21 days, up to three weeks after they've, someone's been uh, infected. Now, uh, live attenuated polio vaccine, OPV, as we've talked about, the Sabin vaccine. This is the one that's caused the problem. Um, virus retains the potential to revert to a virulent form. This is why this is dangerous. And this is what's happened. Uh, these forms can rarely cause paralytic disease, but they can mutate into a wild form, which can cause paralytic disease more frequently. And that's called vaccine associated paralytic polio. And uh, vaccine-associated paralytic polio cases can occur rarely when live attenuated vaccines are used. As we say, not a problem in the US and the UK in terms of derived from here, but with people that have come in from places where OPV is used. Now, we haven't used OPV in the UK since 2004. United States is not since the year 2000. We now use inactive polio vaccine, which is the one that's being offered, of course, uh, in London. Uh, intramuscular injection for routine administration. It's often given with other things like uh, tetanus, diphtheria, inactivated polio vaccine, um, or diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, inactivated polio vaccine. So typically given in, in combinations. Now, whether they're going to be doing the, the IPV as a separate, um, as an isolated injection in London, we, the, we, the, we're not told. The, the information doesn't tell us that. 
it just tells us it's going to be the inactivated polio vaccine which is going to be uh, offered. So I'll be interested to see that. Um, I suspect they're going to be using the ones that are already mixed up, like so, so like the uh, the tetanus diphtheria polio or the, the diphtheria tetanus pertussis polio. But they could do a batch of polio-only vaccines if that's the one they want to focus on. Because, of course, most of the people that are being boosted will have had these already. So interesting to see which way they jump there. Um, so not, normally it's recommended at two, three and four months. I think in the United States it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's two, four and six months in the US. Don't take my word for it. It's, it's, on, it's on this site uh, here uh, uh, from the United States uh, recommendations. Yeah, there it is. Two months, four months, six months through to 18 months and uh, four through to six years in the, in the United States. So basically a similar, similar three dose protocol. Um, can be given at any stage from two months up to 10 years of age. And of course, as we also said, adults can be given it if they need boosted uh, for occupational reasons, if they're traveling to uh, endemic areas um, or if they haven't had it in the past. So there we go. Um, not worried about it at the moment. No clinical cases presenting. I think the authorities are right to just uh, clamp down on this. It's really a pity that people in these areas have chosen not to take the uh, the vaccine uh, up when it was offered. Um, or if people come in from overseas, really they should have the polio vaccine uh, as soon as possible because we do not want polio in the UK. Again, uh, we've had that, we've done with that, and hopefully it's part of history. Let's hope it stays that way. And thank you for watching.